Good morning, folks. Better start the coffee now. It's going to be a jam-packed morning show today. Try to start by spotting a thin dark plasma filament dancing on the north. We're going to spaceweathernews.com for the last 24 hours on our star and find 193 angstroms of light revealing little other than the southern active region incoming. Departed coronal holes with the solar wind not doing much either. Calmed after days of elevated intensity, back to quieter conditions in geospace. Weather will get loud in the USA this week. Coming today with the sun is a brutal heat wave, one that will barely fade through the night. But as Monday's heat wave begins, the jet stream finally says, I'm coming. The cold snap is set to drop temperatures 60 degrees or more in 24 hours, meeting Tuesday's sunrise with a ridiculous temperature gradient in the country. We'll quickly look at how the jet stream is set to bend into position to turn the heat wave into the first snow of the season for many, and then it will begin to move eastward. Quickly looking back at those comets grouped in close on SOHO we saw a few weeks back, there were indeed three little pieces to the traveling group. And for posterity's sake, let's go look at the JPL orbital diagram, which is half theater since it will likely not make it back around again. Alas, steep incoming past north and slightly in front of the sun as we watched it track by on SOHO. And here's the drop. We begin by complementing the solar and cosmic ray suicide correlations with one on the moon tying easily to full moon phase and females studied. To complement the solar and cosmic ray studies showing effects on hippocampal performance and locus ceruleus panic and anxiety response, they are now able to pick out these nervous system stress responses in healthy male subjects. In a totally new avenue for the field, they discovered that ulcer perforation in the youngest people is more likely with the highest levels of cosmic rays, that's low levels of geomagnetic activity. For those with the hard copy or the PDF of our textbook, Go ahead and mentally slide those into chapter 6. Of course, particle and magnetic field forcing on the sun is where most correlations are born. Here we find a new way to track the energetic particle effects during geomagnetic storms and do so in parts of the world where it was previously impossible over the water. They also discovered equatorial excitement from a moderate solar event, indicating it's not just the biggest ones that excite the equatorial electrojet. And speaking of the solar particles forcing the terrestrial condition, they had previously given a chemical explanation for the anomalous 2019 ozone hole, but now they are coming back around to the better explanation. As observers will recall from this morning's show back then, it was the size and shape of the polar vortex which was highly modulated by solar activity and not the chemistry of the atmosphere. And you know, it's not just solar forcing of weather and human health in our textbook, but chapter 7 is all about predicting earthquakes. I'm glad I mentioned yesterday that the average normal is 3 magnitude 6 earthquakes per week, so that when we got them in the span of 6 hours last evening, after we mentioned the uptick in the morning news, it's hard not to notice. Also, an unusual event not listed as a quake, mine, explosion, or anything else. If you don't have the textbook, you can learn all about the forecasting of timing and location for the largest seismic events at quakewatch.net. And that's where we drive harder today. Add another to the OLR pre-quake anomalies list. This one is getting to be quite robust in the peer-reviewed literature. The ULF activity above the epicenter continues to be proven as well, and this has an interesting connection to the story we saw yesterday about low-frequency waves generating electric current via electron and ion separation. The changing of fundamental physics overlooked for decades leads to better understanding of the mechanisms behind the correlations between the sun and electromagnetic signals, and all the various forcing avenues they take here on Earth. And just to cap that off, on the heels of the major confirmation a few weeks ago that the sun triggers the biggest earthquakes, remember that the sun primarily affects the ionosphere, and it interacts directly with the crust via induction and the global electric circuit. We've hit chapters 5, 6, and 7 with the news today. Not bad. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.